it's Vanessa. This is what I look like now. I haven't put on makeup in like a week. So, I'm here today to talk to you about some of the books that I've read so far in March. This is exclusively going to be a middle grade March wrap up. So let me go through all of the books that were on my original TBR, show you some new middle grade books that I have that I took at the last second from the library before it closed. First, I wanted to go through the books that I finished. So here's that pile. Yay! The first book that I read for middle grade March was Chirp. This looks into the Me Too movement. This girl is basically helping her grandmother and her grandmother is kind of like a an eccentric person in the town that they're in. She has this great idea of growing grasshoppers and using them for like eating purposes. And then there's another mystery here. People are trying to like uh, sabotage her grandmother's business. And then also on top of that, she is dealing with like some repressed memories of some sexual harassment, some sexual violence that she felt from a man. And it kind of goes from there. I thought that this was kind of all over the place as you can kind of tell from the plot. It's a very short book and I really value Kate Messner and the themes that she explores in her books. I've read another book by her, Breakout, which I also felt very similarly to this, that I loved the ideas that she had, but I didn't really love the execution of them. I just thought this was way too oversimplistic for the topic of the Me Too movement and like sexual violence that's done to you as a child. I just felt like it, it was too simple how they explained it and how it basically became like every grown woman in this book is saying like I've been through that, we've all been through that, that's basically what happens to women. So I didn't love this book. Because I read this I told myself that I wanted to read Maybe He Just Likes You by Barbara D and that's also supposed to look at the Me Too movement but I'll tell you what I think about that one in just a short while. I also read I Can Make This Promise by Christine Day and this is a mystery book. This is the one that I read for my mystery prompt and it looks at this native girl who has a mom who is native and a father who isn't I believe. It's basically her and her friends starting this project where they're trying to like make a video that they're gonna put into this contest. She finds these letters in an attic and they're from a long-lost relative of hers. Uh, it's basically her trying to figure out more about this long-lost relative and kind of all of the issues that her long lost relative went through because of her ethnicity and background. I thought that this was really lovely. I especially loved all the family members in the book. They felt very believable and they felt like they cared a lot about the main character, the child, and I really enjoyed the perspective of that child and all of her hobbies as well. It's not the mystery mystery that I would expect, but it was a little bit of a mystery. <laughs> I think this one ended up being more of a mystery than I anticipated and this one ended up being less of a mystery than I anticipated. But I would recommend I Can Make This Promise. I really enjoyed the audiobook of it as well. I also read No Fixed Address. This is by Susan Nielsen. This book is from the perspective of a boy named Felix who is uh, experiencing homelessness with his mother. There are very complicated relationships with all of the community members and the people in his school because of how the mom is dealing through her own issues and how that kind of hurts all of the relationships, all of the social safety nets because of how the mother acts. A lot of her stuff is also like mental health issues which I think are treated well here. I felt like it was way too casual in how it discussed all of the themes and issues that we're going through here. It just overall seemed like the author was trying to do way too many uh, serious themes in a very light-hearted funny way that I didn't think landed all of the time. She compares herself in like her bio to like John Green but I don't think in execution that really worked. I also finished Pie in the Sky by Remy Lai and this book is the one I chose for my illustrated book but mostly I listened to it and then I would go back and look at the illustrations. And they do some cool special effects in the audiobook, which I liked. This book is it's really interesting. When I first discussed it, I said that he was an immigrant, but I didn't know that he was an immigrant to Australia. I don't know if I can recall reading a book from the perspective of an Australian main character, so that was a first for me. I really enjoyed the boys and their sibling relationship with each other. I felt like a lot of it was um, like silly booger humor. I don't know if like the point of the baking is as necessary to the story. Towards the end of it, it just seemed like a formula, like they needed to bake this many cakes 
to like get over his grief so I didn't think that like panned out all the way but I really did enjoy how language learning was presented in this book he feels kind of like an alien learning this new language and I totally related to that as well I did enjoy that representation of it I also really enjoyed when they discussed the grief I thought those parts were really emotional overall I did enjoy this book after that I read a really great one so let me just quickly run through kind of my star ratings. I gave this one three stars. I gave this one four stars. I gave this one two and a half. I gave this one three and a half, I believe. And then this one, which is The Night Diary by Vera Hiranandani, I gave four stars. I really, really love this one, especially on audiobook. Mostly it came from the main character, Nisha. She was just incredibly wise and vulnerable, and it just really came through how compassionate and kind she was in trying to learn more about her mother, who she is basically writing letters to, a mother who is no longer there with them. And that's how the book is told through letters. I really felt like I learned so much about the partition of India and Pakistan after British the British ended their rule there and kind of like all of the warring factions of who wanted to do what like people you know about like Gandhi but then like other people who wanted to do different things with the land and what that means for the people who live on that land I think that was like the main point of this book is like she feels like she's of two places because she has a Hindu father and a Muslim mother I believe and she kind of didn't know where she would fit in in this new country that they are these new countries that they're building there was a lot of action in the story and a lot of suspense and a lot of build-up. It was hard to read at times but I really was gripped by this and I really loved the main character so much. I also read, listened to, Stamped and this is Racism, Anti-Racism and You and this is the remix to Stamped from the beginning. So this is basically Jason Reynolds taking all of the things that Ibram X. Kendi wrote about in his book Stamped from the beginning but making it for kids. A lot of this book is basically him telling you history facts but telling you this is not a history book. It's narrated by Jason Reynolds who I feel like I may just not like his narration style. I really love his writing and I, I love like his track series which is not narrated by him but the books that I've tried there are narrated by him I don't love as much I just I don't know it's not like my style 100% and I wish that I I liked his narration more so apart from the narration aspect of this book that I had trouble with I think it's how much history is like compacted in this one book it's obviously written in a way that's approachable to children and that was the whole point but it did feel like it went in one ear and out the other and I think I gained the major themes that he was going with, but I don't think I I really grabbed any of like the key people and like bills and like situations that happened throughout history. I think that just has to do with my brain though and like learning a 500 plus year history in one small book is very difficult for me and I think that's why I, I never finished Stamped from the beginning. It's a book that I tried to read many times because I really wanted to learn that history and I feel like I can learn it better in chunks than I can in like one big text that covers that much of history. I would recommend it as kind of like an introductory text to children if they want to learn more about race and how race has affected our country throughout millennia. I think I ended up giving it three and a half. In the past few days I finished three more books. The first is Stand Up Yumi Chung by Jessica Kim. I listened to this one on audiobook thanks to Libro FM and I loved it. It's the first one that got four and a half stars out of me during middle grade March which is exciting. We're following a girl who is growing up in Los Angeles. She has immigrant parents who own a restaurant and she really just wants to be a stand-up comedian. She watches this vlogger comedian on YouTube and she kind of wants to be just like her. She is kind of being forced to go through these tutoring lessons so that she could maintain a position in the school that she's in through like an academic scholarship and so her parents are always pushing that education is everything and you need to be studying all the time um, to become a doctor or a lawyer so that you can grow up and make a lot of money and be safe and secure. But Yumi just wants to make people laugh and she stumbles upon this comedy group that is doing like a comedy camp. Through a case of mistaken identity, she ends up stuck in this camp before she knows that she's basically lying about who she is and her identity. And it snowballs from there, it gets worse and worse. But it's also a situation that is just pretty funny to see play out just because you know that it's gonna end well at the end anyway. I thought that this was a very lighthearted 
excited and sweet and uplifting story and it's definitely exactly what I needed. I had started my Dark Vanessa before this book and I was just like, wow, I really don't want to be reading about teacher-student relationships at the moment with this much detail. And so I started listening to Stand Up Yumi Chung instead and it was exactly what I needed. So I definitely recommend this if you're looking for a comforting and nice light read. I love the main character Yumi so much. I also loved her family and you can tell that they all really cared about each other. I thought that the secondary characters were also really great and distinctive, which is sometimes hard to find in middle grade. Sometimes all of the friends of the main character kind of just blend into each other. I really love the message in the story and I think that's the most that's the, the greatest thing that I will take away from this book and I definitely totally recommend to put this in your radar if you're a middle grade reader. I think this is lovely and it just released recently so make sure that you support this author if you can still order it through a bookstore or get it through your library as an e-audiobook or ebook. I totally recommend that you do that. After that a book that I finished just yesterday was Dear Sweet Pea by Julie Murphy. I've never read any Julie Murphy before. I haven't read Pudding or watched the movie or anything, but I think this was a great introduction to Julie Murphy and the kinds of things that she writes. This is just a nice, realistic, contemporary read of a girl growing up in a small Texas town. One of the things that I want to point out about this book that I think it did well is the representation of it. There's a lot of different kinds of people and identities and body types and races that are featured in this book, and I think it was done in a way that was not ever overt and that I really appreciate in fiction. I think that's hard to do honestly because you want to be as inclusive as possible but sometimes you kind of throw it in people's faces. So I like the way that that came through in this book. I really enjoyed Sweet Pea and her story and her family and kind of the trouble that they're going through. Her family is facing this divorce and she's living half of the time in a house and then two houses down her father is living in that house so then she kind of splits time between those two houses. And then in between her mom and her dad's house is Miss Flora May's house who is the advice columnist for the local town paper. Through random occurrences that of course are only only happen in middle grade books, um, she ends up starting to write for this advice column without telling Miss Flora May or anybody else. And it's just a nice story about friendship, changing family dynamics, telling the truth, and trying to be there for people when they need it. And I really did enjoy listening to this while I was scraping a bunch of bathroom cabinets with sandpaper and painting yesterday. And the last book that I want to talk about is one I just finished maybe like 30 minutes ago. And that is um, Maybe He Just Likes You by Barbara D. This is a book that also tackles me too so I kind of wanted to read it because I had heard good things about it. It seemed like it's something that I could compare to the first book that I read for middle grade March which was Chirp. I thought that this book did the Me Too movement for a middle grade audience a lot better. I ended up giving that book four stars and before I forget I gave this one four stars as well. Maybe He Just Likes You focuses on a main character who is having some troubles at school as some boys are, st are starting to do things that are she feels are more than teasing and all of her friends and all of the guidance counselors and all of the teachers don't see it that way and it continues escalating until it's obvious that what they're doing is sexual harassment. They're hugging her when she does not want to be hugged. They're kind of blocking her way and not letting her pass. Um, they're touching her in inappropriate ways on her hair and her body in general. That was, I think, handled very well in this book in showing how sometimes seventh graders don't have the vocabulary to say, you know, what these boys are doing. Are It's not just joking or teasing or playing around. I also really liked kind of all of the secondary plot that is going on in the background so her mother is dealing with issues with her job and it's also really lovely to see how an extracurricular activity is giving the main character more confidence and strength so I really valued that as well she starts taking these classes that make her feel better I don't think this book I don't think it needed to be funny but I also don't see myself recommending this to kids like everywhere. Um, I think it's a very niche subject and topic. Definitely a topic and subject that I would want to read, but I don't necessarily know if I can see myself kind of like putting this in everybody's hands at the library unless they're specifically asking for this topic. I would totally recommend and definitely recommend over Chirp. I just started on audiobook The Thing About Jellyfish, so that's gonna be finished soon. Then I still want to read A Kind of Paradise, so that one I haven't read yet. I still have The War I Finally Won, so we'll see about that one. And then I have Genesis Begins Again and Some Places More Than Others. I put this one 
on hold on audiobook, but they haven't bought it, so I'm kind of disappointed because I really want to listen to this one. Five more that I need to get to. I wanted to talk about things that I feel like I'm not going to finish, and then three new things that I don't think I've shown. Maybe I've shown one. The book that I feel like I'm not going to get to is The Book of Boy. I read two chapters of this, and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll read it so I can chat during the discussion of the book, but it's just not for me. I feel like the language is kind of hard to get into. And then the other one I'm having issues with right now, which is kind of sad, is Murder is Bad Manners by Robin Stevens. I feel like most people like this book that have reviewed it on Goodreads or that I've seen on booktube, but I'm about 110 pages in and this is doing nothing for me. I really dislike how the narrator talks about herself and how she talks about her counterpart. And then another thing that I'm having a lot of issues with in this book is keeping apart all of the suspects because they're pretty much at this moment all teachers and they all have very similar sounding names and it's hard for my brain to know like who's the phys ed teacher and who's like the science teacher and to keep track of like why there are suspects at the moment. So we'll see if I give this one a shot in the next few days. I'm pretty much running out of the library books that I hoarded so I might not have a choice but to read this when all my library books are done and I can't get any more from the library. And then here's three more. I think I did end up showing you Prairie Lotus by Linda Sue Park in my last video of my social distancing TBR that I snagged from the library and I'm so excited for this one. I think I'm gonna listen to this one if I can find the audiobook. This is gonna be a historical fiction. And then I have this book is anti-racist which just looks super cool on the inside. The illustrations and the way it's stylized. So I'm excited to dig into this one. It's supposed to be 20 lessons on how to wake up, take action, and do the work. And then the other one is Queen of the Sea, which is a graphic novel, and it's kind of a chunker of a graphic novel, which makes me excited. And I think I might have shown this one as well, but if you hadn't seen it, here it is. It just looks at, uh, like a medieval setting, and that's basically all I know. I just want to get into it because of the way the art looks. So that is it for me and all of my middle grade March updates that I had to give to you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you read any of these or would like to read any of these, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.